in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. Dear audience, Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Quram Shazad from National University of Modern Languages, Islamabad. Today I am going to make a video on relevance theory. Relevance theory was given by Wilson and Sperber and then later on they kept on improving it until they produced it again in 2002. The basic idea that they have taken it is from Grice. Grice talked about four maxims or principles or of cooperative principles. The principle of quality, quantity, relevance and manner. But Sperber and Wilson, they believe that if all these four principles are to be collected in just one principle, that will be a relevance principle. So it depends that how the speaker is encoding the message and then of course <coughs> how the listener is going to decode the message. We should understand that the speaker who is living in a particular society has got culture, has got personal values, he believes in social values and he knows how to live life in that particular society. So he is well aware of the religion, he is well aware of the economic conditions of the society, he is well aware of the values and traditions of the society. And in pragmatics, as I have already talked about, that we usually focus on contextual meanings, that the speaker says less but more gets communicated. So we will have to see the relationship of the speaker as well as the listener that how they are interacting with one another or each other and what kind of language they are making use of when they are speaking with one another. So Sperber has given two basic principles. Cognitive principle which deals with human cognition and communicative principle that what utterances they create. As I have talked about the origin of relevance theory that Grice claims about intentions, expressions and recognitions, classical code model coding and decoding and towards an inferential model. So of course human beings when they are interacting they are making use of language language which is there in the mind, language which is there and human beings they have got a repertoire of knowledge in the mind. So they have got a repertoire of linguistic items over there. They know very well that when they intend to produce something that how they are going to make use of syntactic and semantic structures and of course then phonology will be involved and phonological structures will be involved and this is how language okay it will be produced. So the speakers who are producing the language they know it very well that with whom they are interacting, why they are interacting, what is their relationship with them, what is the you know what are the belief systems of the people that they are sharing with each other. So keeping in mind all these things cognitively they encode the message. So when the message is encoded and it travels in the air and it goes into the ears of the listener, the listener is going to use the cognitive abilities in order to decode that message. So what the listener is getting? The listener is once again getting the semantic, the syntactic, the lexical items. So such type of structures, they will be there and the listener is going to decode the message. So the speakers, 
they will have to keep in mind all these things and they will have to use explicator that how they are going to encode the message what kind of lexical items and syntactic structures they are going to make use of in order to produce a proposition which will be according to the expectations of the listener which will be keeping in mind the socio-cultural background of the listener as well as of the speaker which will be that what kind of relationships they are enjoying together a linguistically coded piece of evidence is called utterance utterances automatically create expectations which gear the hearer of course as soon as the sentence is spoken so the listener you know automatically that utterance or that sentence it will create certain kind of expectations in the mind of the listener for example in doing pragmatics the author has given multiple examples for example in one example he creates a situation that there is a husband and there is a wife and wife says when will you be back home so the listener who is the husband understands it immediately that she is expecting him to come on time so that they should have dinner together but somehow or the other he says that I'll try to come back on time but don't you know the traffic situation in our city so of course he is trying to come up to the expectations of the first listener that is why the kind of sentence that he has produced is according to the expectations of the first speaker and now he speaker so she can understand that what kind of sentence this person has uttered another example is that even the president has personal life and the situation is not very much different in Pakistan the kind of you know problems political issues that we are facing today in Pakistan so even our ex prime minister can say that even the or the editor of a journal can say even the prime minister has a personal life so the word even which is made use of here okay it has got semantic uh, you know meanings but of course the way it is used pragmatically in the context so it means that the prime ministers or the presidents they are also human beings so you should not consider them that they are some kind of prophet so you should not label them that they will treat you or they will treat themselves as if they are coming from Allah Almighty and they are some special human beings no they are the same kind of human beings they eat the same kind of things that you and I and we all eat so they have their personal lives so we should not try to expose their personal lives because we all human beings have got weaknesses and issues so when somebody is speaking even the president has got a personal life it means that you are trying to intervene into the life of a person which is personal and personal lives should not be discussed so of course when the message is encoded in the form of an utterance or a sentence cognitively we keep in mind that what is the context we keep in mind that what is the socio-cultural background of the person and what kind of society we are living in what are the ideas we adhere to so keeping in mind all these things you know the text is produced the talk is made so the concept of relevance and cognition relevance can be considered from two points of view intuitively in relevance theoretical terms of course when we are interacting with the human being 
वी नो हिम वेरी वेल और हर वेरी वेल यूजली सो दैट इज वाई द इंटरेक्शन गोज ऑन एंड वेन द इंटरेक्शन गोज ऑन दे आर सो मैनी थिंग्स दैट वी आर कम्युनिकेटिंग विद ईच अदर थ्रू आवर वर्बल एंड नॉन वर्बल कम्युनिकेशन सिस्टम वी आर कम्युनिकेटिंग द मैसेजेस वी आर इनकोडिंग द मैसेजेस and the other person is making use of cognition is making use of cognitive abilities and in this way he or she is decoding the message which is very much relevant so maybe sometimes during the exchange the answer that we are getting from the speaker it looks like that it is not a relevant answer would you like to go with me outside the answer should be yes or no which looks that it is it will be a very relevant answer but the person is saying i have got a class so i have got a class you will have to create relevance by using your abilities that the person is busy so he cannot go with you right now so we will have to see that what kind of cognitive load that exchange is carrying the sentence that the person has produced what kind of cognitive load it is carrying if it is difficult to understand if it is difficult to determine the relevance of that per part that the person has spoken it means that it is cognitively it means that it is cognitively very irrelevant if it is easy to understand the person then it is cognitively very much relevant because it is easy to decode so when the authors and people they are making use of metonymies irony paradoxes symbols and similes with the help of language his anger is like a hot container so of course the listener will apply the cognitive ability to decode this message and it will take a lot of time to understand or to understand the relevance of this message so something which is easy to decode is highly relevant and something which is difficult to decode is highly irrelevant or less irrelevant irre uh, so this is how we need to understand that how the people they are making use of language the search for relevance is a basic feature of human cognition human mind always tries to understand the sentences that we are hearing and because we will have to interpret those sentences very quickly so that we should satisfy the other person so that we should give answer to the other person utterances raising expectations of relevance are not so because they are expected to obey a cooperative principle and maxims of any communicative convention relevance of input is measured by positive cognitive effects intuitively any input might be relevant in relevance theoretic terms if and only if those inputs draw true conclusions so they will be relevant because whenever the person has spoken something now you are looking for relevance you are trying to understand intuitively as well as relevance theoretic terms in relevance theoretic terms the semantico syntactic structure that the person has produced the explicator that the person has produced because from the expli explicator you will try to understand the implicator the implicator the meaning which are implied in the text in the talk will be determined by the hearer but the explicator the syntactic structure the words they are produced by the speaker so if the explicator is very explicit is very clear is very relevant it will not be a demanding sentence it will be easily understood by the hearer but if the explicator is irrelevant it is having metonymies paradoxes similes and metaphors and less is said but more is communicated it is not explicit but it is implicit so the listener will be applying lot of meta cognitive abilities to break down this sentence to understand this sentence and its relevance will be less cognitive effects are contextual source must be 
all together the input itself the context because sentences are produced in context no one can produce any sentence without context when the context is there topic is there aims and objectives are there people are there culture is there physical context is there socio pragmatic background is there then the sentences are produced then the interaction goes on so context plays a very important role which i have already discussed in one of my videos other types are revisions of assumptions of course when we are interacting with the human beings we have certain assumptions about that person we try to understand the background of that person we try to understand the socio pragmatic culture of that person and the kind of relationship that we are enjoying with that person all play a very important role the proportional relevance of input the greater the positive cognitive effects the greater the relevance would be the greater the processing effort the lower the relevance would be so when you are applying more and more of cognitive abilities because the sentence contains metonymies synecdoches or ambiguities or for example ambiguity is created through you know hyponymy or mironymy so uh, synonyms or antonyms so it means that it carries a lot of weight and more cognitive abilities you will have to apply to process that message in your mind so when you are applying more efforts it means that it is less relevant we are serving meat it's very clear we are serving chicken again it's very clear either we are serving chicken or meat so then it will create issue now we don't know because the person has used either or so only one thing can be there so in order to decode the message that we have received we need to understand the cognitive principles this principle states that human cognition tends to be geared to the maximization of relevance potentially relevant stimuli so this stimuli will come through you know verbal and non verbal communication what kind of verbal message the person has left for you and what kind of non verbal communication the person has produced when he was speaking look at the facial expressions of that person look at the gestures of that person and then try to understand whether the verbal and non verbal communication they are going side by side or they are moving apart so what kind of contextual clues you can find in the message which is given to you the retrieval mechanisms the inferential mechanisms so we will have to see that how the explicator is used by the speaker what kind of sentences are spoken by the speaker what is the context what is the relationship well dear audience in our today's class i have talked about relevance theory i have said that sperber and wilson they are the you know creators of this theory and they have taken their ideas from paul grice and according to them relevance plays a very important role and if all the four principles we can put together in one principle that will be the relevance principle so they are of the point of view that it has got relationship with cognition so the kind of message which is conveyed to you through text or talk you will have to see that what kind of explicator is used and with the help of that explicator what is implied in the text so text is produced in context and when it is produced we always have got certain ideas in our mind we know who is our listener we know the context so keeping in mind all these things the message is encoded so it is the job of the listener to decode that message and the listener is also supposed to keep all these things in mind if the message is full of metonymy similes and synecdoches paradoxes or ironies so it means that it has got a lot of cognitive load and it has got less relevance because you will have to apply more and more of your cognitive abilities to decode the message thank you very much